Further debate. The member for Timiskaming Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. It's uh, always an honour to speak in this House on behalf of the people of Timiskaming Cochrane. I think it's a sad day today. Without any warning, without any warning at all, the government has decided to move a motion, which uh, they have the numbers to do, to uh, basically recess the House till the 28th. So three days left. And people are going to say in the government, oh, well, what can you do in three days? But one thing, question period. Question period is one of the most important parts of our democratic process. It's the one time that we can hold the government to account. And I didn't appreciate it myself as much as I thought until sometimes pre-COVID, whips, I'm the whip of the party, and whips from other um, legis uh, legislative bodies would come here. And we had the whip, I believe it was from, the, um, uh, from Ohio. I think it was o Ohio. And he was sitting in the, member, in the member's gallery and I came to talk to him and he was watching question period. I said, so what do you think about this? He says, this is the most incredible process I've ever seen. <laughs> and honestly, I said, what? What? And he said, you get to hold ministers to account. You, in our system, for instance, the Secretary of Agriculture doesn't even have to be in the legislature. So there is no way in that state to hold the Secretary of Agriculture so you can't stand up and ask a question. It's incredible. So the government, the government has now eliminated that for three days, right before an election right before a budget at a time when the government is pretty sensitive to questions. As you can see during question period and the government house leader is, no, is, we disagree on many issues, but I give credit where credit is due. He is very good at deflecting questions. He is a master. And whenever the government house leader gets up to answer a question, you know you're hitting home. <laughs> because he, he is very good at deflecting questions. And if you look, even at today's question period, there's a few times where the government house leader got up and basically punched the questioner in the face. That's how, and that's his job. But question period has a purpose. And denying those three days of question period, that is the most egregious thing of all. It is the most egregious thing of all. And I will give you an example. Actually, I will give you three examples. And we are getting close to the end. And as anyone who's been here for a while, there is a pretty heavy duty, it's the word I'm looking for, competition for questions. There is, because everyone, everyone in the opposition and on the government side, but the government, the government side, their questions tend to be pretty, pretty favorable. Like, <laughs> Minister, can you tell me how great a job you have done today? That's a government side question. But, but, but but on the on the opposition side and it is one of the few tools we have question period is very important so there is a competition to get a question on question period specifically for local questions for regional questions that is the most and for me for me that is the most almost the most important function in this house and i i'm not a proud man but i pride myself on being able to have relationships with with ministers across the way and work with them, and I give credit where credit, I give criticism where it's due, but I give credit where credit's due as all. Well. I try to be very fair. So we're going to talk about three issues that could have been, should have been, and are now going to be put on the record in this house so that the ministers can have a chance to, 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 to work on them. So the first one, uh, in, in Vantral Township, the Laurel family, can you imagine this speaker? Waking up in the morning, you're 250 feet from a river and you hear something and you have a, a normal house, no normal duplex house, you hear something and your whole front yard slides into the river. And now the house is sliding into the river. And guess what? They don't get insurance because insurance doesn't qualify for landslides. So they go to the township, they come to our office, and they're trying to get this area declared a disaster area because then provincial funding can can um, yeah can be enacted, can be provided, and they need it. Now, to the to the minister of municipal affairs credit, 
I we sent we sent the information to his office and I spoke to him twice and he and both times he he looked at the file to his credit I I I am not and this very well could be being solved as we speak I don't know but my plan was that if it wasn't solved that this week next week is constituency week and the week after is when is the week we're talking about and I was going to get if it wasn't solved because there was only a couple days left before the election I was going to try and help and get this issue fixed because this family has a mortgage to pay on that house they can't live in it it's sliding into the river through no fault of their own it slid into the river in February unheard of in my part of the world unheard of now Again, I give credit where credit's due. I'm sure the minister's looking at it, but that would have been a question. The Laurela family house in the Vantral Township needs to be declared a disaster area because it is a disaster. It's a natural disaster. And it didn't hit the news because it wasn't 50 houses. It was one. But that one family is basically going to be ruined because they've got a mortgage to pay on a worthless house and they can't buy another one or replace it. So that is worthy of question period. A second one. So, and I have brought this forward to the Minister of Environment, I believe twice, to his office. And again, they very well could be working on this. And that's why I didn't, wasn't really excited about it because I was hoping, I was hoping, I was hoping that it would be, would we get some, some uh, closure to it, but, now those three days are gone so i'm going to i'm going to give you the scenario in armstrong township one of the most anyone who's been to the plowing match in 2009 in armstrong township in Rolton, that's one of the most agricultural places in northern ontario and the ministry of environment approved a human waste sewage lagoon okay that's fine on a former dairy farm and you, using the base as the former dairy farms lagoon and don't have a problem yet but when the neighbors were supposed to be contacted that didn't happen because the neighbors have post office boxes in Earlton so the consultation didn't really happen so when the neighbors did find out they asked the question and the question was so where is the former well on that dairy farm uh oh where is the former well? Because it's a dairy, it was a dairy farm. I, when I was on the board of Dairy Farmers Ontario, I knew that dairy farm very well. They milked, I believe, 80, 90 cows. They needed a lot of water. And when we asked the ministry and their consultants, where is that well? Because we don't see it on your plans. We were told, oh, no, no, it's an abandoned farm and the house is abandoned. There's no well there. No, there, somewhere, somewhere there's a well. I milked cows for a long time. You don't milk cows without an adequate water supply. So I brought that up to the minister. I'm sure he's working on it. But if it hadn't have been, if it hadn't have been addressed, I would have been asking this question in question period. And hopefully in those three days. And now all of a sudden the seven days of questions are compressed. So you're going to have less questions. And the last... And the Order. last one I'm going to bring up, and I, you know what, I work hard all summer. I don't know what the member from uh, Kitchener Conestoga is, but I work hard all summer. And I use, uh, and you're, and the member from Kitchener Conestoga is somehow inferring the question period doesn't matter, and I would totally disagree. So, Kinda. the third one, the third one, so. I hesitate to interrupt the conversation that's going on between the member for Tumisming Cochran and the member for Kitchener Conestoga. But I, I think I have to because uh, he's got the floor. Remember for Mr. Ming Cochran. And the third one. So this week, I brought forward an issue regarding an accident that happened in my riding, tra tragic accident. And since that accident, we have been flooded with dash cam pictures of other near accidents on Highway 11. Like it is, it is absolutely unbelievably scary. And you know what? That is definitely, should definitely be, that should be on the question period lineup every day. You know, every day. You know, that, that, and I said 
when I talked about that accident, you know what? I don't think any government is going to be able to change everything in one day. I don't expect that. I wasn't partisan. I'm not trying to be partisan. But there are things that we need to do, things we need to look at, like why is there only eight inspectors, not only for the 400 driving schools, but for all the colleges in Ontario? Why? Why doesn't the government change that? Why aren't the inspection stations along the Trans-Canada Highway, why aren't they open more often? so that trucks actually get inspected more often. Why doesn't the OPP have enough funds to actually do the job that they want to do patrolling those highways? Why? I think those are all very worthy questions for question period. The people of Tomiskamy Cochrane and the people across Northern Ontario are very interested in why, because they know they risk their lives every time they get in that highway, just like those two families on last Thursday who lost their children in one adult life. Those are worthy questions for question period. And any time, any time that a government takes the opportunity, especially right before a vote, right before an election, to deny the rights of members to hold the government to account, that is a travesty. And that is why I am so opposed to this motion. Thank you, Speaker. Members will please take their seats. Mr. Calandra has moved that when the House adjourns today, that it stands adjourned until 9 a.m. on Thursday, April the 28th, 2022. All those in favor of the motion will please rise one at a time and be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Calandra. Mr. Calandra. Mr. Lecce. Mr. Lecce. Ms. Mulrooney. Ms. Mulrooney. Ms. Elliott. Ms. Elliott. Mr. Bethlehem Fogg. Mr. Bethlehem Fogg. Mr. Sarkaria. Mr. Sarkaria. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Ms. Jones. Ms. Jones. Mr. Downey. Mr. Downey. Mr. Cho Scarborough North. Mr. Cho Scarborough North. Mr. Tabolo. Mr. Tabolo. Ms. Thompson. Ms. Thompson. Ms. Fullerton. Ms. Fullerton. Mr. Cho Willowdale. Mr. Cho Willowdale. Ms. McKenna. Ms. McKenna. Mr. Pacini. Mr. Pacini. Mr. Rashid. Mr. Rashid. Ms. Dunlop. Ms. Dunlop. Mr. Coe. Mr. Coe. Ms. Kanji. Ms. Kanji. Mr. Parsa. Mr. Parsa. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Hogarth. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Crawford. Mr. Crawford. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Pettipes. Mr. Pettipes. Ms. Skelly. Ms. Skelly. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Mr. Miller Perry San Muskoka. Mr. Miller Perry San Muskoka. Mr. Gazzetto. Mr. Gazzetto. Mr. Baum. Mr. Baum. Mr. Canapati. Canapati. Mrs. Y. Mrs. Y. Mr. Smith Peterborough Cortha. Mr. Smith Peterborough Cortha. Mr. Co. Mr. Co. Mr. Thani Gaslin. Mr. Thani Gaslin. Mr. Sabawi. Mr. Sabawi. Mr. Ostra. Mr. Ostra. Ms. Trianta Filopoulos. Trianta Filopoulos. Mr. Pang. Mr. Pang. All those opposed to the motion will please rise one at a time and be recognized by the clerk. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Sattler. Mr. Vantoff. Mr. Vantoff. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Shamanta. Ms. Shamanta. Ms. Andrew. Ms. Andrew. Ms. Morrison. Ms. Morrison. Mr. Hassan. Mr. Hassan. Mr. Schreiner. Mr. Schreiner. Ms. Hunter. Ms. Hunter. Madame Kular. Madame Kular. Mrs. Karahali. Mrs. Karahali. The ayes are 42, the nays are 11. The ayes being 42 and the nays being 11, I declare the motion carried. Point of order, the government house leader. We are pursuant to standing order 59, just to outlay the order of business when we come back. Uh, on the uh, morning of uh, Thursday the uh, 29th, uh, 28th, excuse me, Thursday the 28th, uh, we will be dealing with uh, private bills and in the afternoon the presentation of Her Majesty's budget.